When we think of colors, we typically think of them as hex values, where you can see something with a, with a pound sign and some letters and numbers that are around six values together. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So for example, you can see that what I'm choosing is the color green and how it's represented in a way that our apps can typically understand is in 00C201. Now that's not the first thing I think about when I think of the color green. Now, what if we had a more human friendly way of representing colors? And that's where a format called HSLA comes into the picture. It's a widely supported color format that allows us to specify the four parts that feed into the color we ultimately see. And those four parts are hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha. Now, before I show you what the HSLA format looks like and how a color can be represented using it, let me take a step back and just explain what each of these four parts actually do because understanding what they are will greatly help you figure out what numbers and how the final value maps to a color that we ultimately will see. So with hue. Hue is the actual color we're going for. And this color is represented as a degree value somewhere in the color wheel. So you can see the color wheel has 360 degrees as all circles go, and then each degree maps a particular color. So you can see that, for example, at the 315 degree mark, we're at a pinkish reddish color. If at the 90 degree mark, it's like a yellowish green, and so on. And so, for example, if I want to go for a color that's more in the blue range, I'd probably pick something that is somewhere between 200 and 245 degrees over on this side of the quadrant. And so the hue is a degree value that maps to a value on the color wheel. So the color wheel has finally come back, not to haunt us, but to actually help us in terms of what we're trying to go for. The next value is saturation. And what saturation refers to is how intense the color happens to be. And it goes from value of zero, which is like a muddled gray type of color, to 100, where whatever color you chose is appearing at the full intensity it was designed to appear at. The next value is lightness. And the way to think about it is, imagine we have a bright white light in our hands that we can shine onto some object. If the a value of zero means the light is completely off, and there's complete darkness. We can't see anything, so the color is completely black. But a value of 100 for lightness means that our value, our light bulb, is shining so bright that we cannot see the color at all. It's basically pure white. So in order to have the color appear with the, a level of intensity that I think would be appropriate for us, we wanna have the lightness be somewhere around the, the middle. Not quite zero, not quite 100, but somewhere closer to the 65, 70, 80 range. The last value is alpha, and this might be something you're more familiar with because it's also known as transparency and determines whether our opt color causes the, the background or the fill of whatever you're setting to be either completely transparent, which means a value of zero, or it is completely visible, it's a value of one. In many, many cases, you'll probably just default this value to one because you may not be looking for transparency at the color level. But if you do, you have the ability to set that. And now that's really what turns it into the HSLA input. So HSLA takes hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha as its values. And you can see an example of an HSA color would be something like at the bottom where I have HSLA 55, 90, 80, and one. And the 55 is the hue, so it corresponds to a degree value. 90 is in terms of this case, the saturation, how intense the color is, lightness is the light, and one is alpha. Now, the way we typically use it in our typical web development days is very straightforward as well because in CSS, the HSLA function is a supported value that can be provided wherever a CSS property is looking for a color. So in this case, I have a body selector with the property being background color and the value is HSLA and the four numbers that go with it to map to the color that we want. Similarly in JavaScript, you can do exactly the same thing where you can provide the HSLA value as a string to any style property that will support it. And in JavaScript and also in CSS as well with custom properties, you can go more fancy and parameterize each of the values as well. So here I have a function called get HSLA color where I pass in the arguments for hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha, and in return get a string that I can provide as the input to a CSS custom property or sorry, CSS style property that needs it to represent a color. So very handy there. And so there you have it, a very quick overview of a color format that is not 
hex values that isn't RGB in various weird letters and numbers, but instead is in a more human friendly format, which is HSLA, where you have a color that maps to a location in the color wheel. So it's not complete magic in terms of what colors there are, and you can adjust the intensity and the appearance of that color by changing the, the saturation, lightness, and alpha values. So if you have any questions about HSLA, colors, or anything front-end related, post in the forums at forum.krupa.com where I and others will be happy to help you out. If you have any friends or enemies, tell them all about this video. I'd love to hear their feedback, love to see my view count go up, hit subscribe to also make the subscriber count go up, which again makes me feel really good about myself. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter where I share bite-sized updates on web development topics and typically things on the web that I find interesting from a developer point of view. Lastly, if you like watching videos and you also like reading articles, you might also enjoy reading these content in book form, either paperback or Kindle editions. I have a bunch of books that I've written over the years, many which are pretty new, and so take a look at the link in the description in the video below. And with that, I will see you all next time.